Hey guys, sorry I'm a little late today. I was just having to do some stuff this morning and I'm back. It's 1.15 uh, Eastern Time in Montreal. Heather Boyd Wire here and every week we do a live stream for Wired Lady TV. So we're going to get started soon. I'm going to pull up the video on my computer so I can see who's hopping on. Last week we wrapped up the 10 day wire uh, bracelet making challenge that was super fun and uh, we had some great winners for the draw and I sent off all the prizes on Monday so that's super exciting you guys will get some stuff in the mail and that's so Linda's here hey Linda hey Ginger how are you guys doing today let me know uh, where you're watching from what time it is and all that sort of stuff so I have the video pulled up on the computer so I can see your comments and also, uh, people were wondering when we're going to do the next Let's Get Wired show. And that's a show where we, I have a project and we work together and we share pictures on Discord. So that's coming up soon. I'll let you guys know the date. Uh, we have oh, Maryland uh, for Linda. Cool. And Clarice is here from New York. Becky, Peggy, hey, how are you? And... My eyesight is bad. Sonali Dutta is here and Paula, Julia. Wow, lots of people today. That's awesome. From Uruguay. Woo, that's that's awesome. I've never been down there. For this south I've been is um, Costa Rica. And Mustafa and Jane and I hope I'm not missing any names, Cheryl. So, uh, and if ever you have any questions, let me know if I miss your comments. Just to ask again. Hey, Laura. And from Barbados, wow, that's so cool. And uh, I knew a guy, um, Will Black, I think he was Barbados. He was living in Barbados. He's a rock and roll singer and he used to do a lot of live shows from there. So that was really cool. Victoria's here from the UK. Hey, Victoria. And I was looking for you in the group. Yes, no, I'm a little late. I went to see a friend's mom at a residence and um, you were not allowed, of course, to visit people inside residences, but we were on the, on the deck wearing our masks and social distancing and stuff. So that was nice to see her. A lot of new people. Yeah, thanks everybody for joining. That's awesome. Peggy, I'm excited to see the live stream. Yes. So um, today I'm going to troubleshoot uh, some ideas. Uh, I actually have some friends that live in California who are puppeteers. They make puppets for a lot of big movies. They made puppets for an older movie, Being John Malkovich, and some other um, Fraggle Rock type movies and stuff. So they're really cool people. I met them on Instagram. And um, Camilla, the woman, had ordered something from me on Etsy. And so I made them a bonus gift, which was these earrings that looked like puppets. So I'm going to show you that. And then I'm going to, uh, she was wondering if I sold puppet earrings and I said, well, the ones I made her were one of a kind art pieces that I wouldn't reproduce, but I'm going to try to make a simpler version of the puppet earrings on the live stream. So, hey, Wendy, how you doing? And Jody, awesome. So lurking in Lutherworth, <laughs> fantastic. So I'm going to flip the screen and show you guys pictures of the puppet earrings and then we're going to play around with the design. So let's flip that screen as always. There we go, bring you over. Perfect, there's my iPad. So I will just get the iPad going and get my code for the iPad. So here are the puppet earrings. So hopefully you guys can see them well. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit closer. That should be good. So, Isabella, wow, hey, thank you. So I'm gonna show a, a closer picture. So these are the puppets. These are very, uh, truly one of a kind because what I did was I took uh, pictures of their, photographs of their face and I uh, printed them really, really small and glued them to these uh, wooden beads. And so I glued the faces and they're lacquered on there. And then I did the body uh, with like a little base and then the beads and then the beads uh, hanging down like that. And then I actually used tiger tail to connect the, to connect the um, arms and legs. And these ones, like I said, are very complicated. So what I'm going to try to do today is actually, rather than use tiger tail, I'm going to try to use some little chain. 
And I probably won't attach the feet for if I want to do a simple pair of earrings. I'm thinking just to attach the arms. So we're going to see how that goes. And then this was actually inspired by a design that I did quite a few years ago for a, um, for a skeleton. So I'm going to show you guys those. And then we're going to go from there and try to make the puppets. So you guys are talking about your lunch. That's fun. So so here's our a couple of their, they're all tangled up now, of course. So let me untangle these guys. That's the trouble with some of these designs. They get very um, tangled up. I can't even figure out how I how I tangled these up now. Oh my goodness. This is this is a this is a hot mess. Let me try to untangle these guys. How did I connect those? Oh, it's the foot. There we go. There's the arm and the foot. Perfect. <laughs> Whoops. So there we go. So here's a little skeleton. These I made years ago, and um, that's the idea. I want to do like a base, like the like the sort of shoulders things, and then you put beads. And this is like this bead is actually a uh, uh, a bone, like it's a it's a skull that's in the shape of a bone. And then I've made these bigger using like actual skull beads as well, which is really cool. And then there's another one there. And so the, the rib cage is actually like folded around like that. So that's super, super cool. So I'm gonna go off that idea a little bit for the puppet earrings and then we'll go from there. And then I used to do these with kids in workshops and they were super fun and we just, um, so I would make the base, like the, the rib cage base with the white wire, and then the kids would do all the beading on the arms and legs. So that was really fun. And then this is just one of those, you know, those uh, massage kind of mats they, they put on taxi driver seats and, and stuff. So, um, so this is one of those uh, little wooden beads from those massage chairs and that you can draw the face on top. I used to do that a lot with kids as well. So Peggy says, no, if I need... Two for beads. I know where they are packed. Oh, I'm missing all kinds of conversations. <laughs> okay, so these are fun. So I'm not going to do the skeletons today, but I'm going to do a kind of a puppet thing. So what I'm going to do is I'll bring, I have some 20 gauge wire. So this is craft wire from Michaels. I also use the artistic copper wire as well. I don't have any silver and gold left, so I'm just using the craft wire. But for the samples, I don't mind. So here are some... Uh, pliers. Now the thing I wanted to try, and I'm not sure if it's going to work, is I know you can buy those spacer kind of, uh, I don't even know what they're called. If anybody knows what they're called, I'm going to draw a picture of one and you can let me know if you know what they're called. So they kind of look like this and they have three holes in them. It's metal and you use those to uh, divide you know, your strings for making um, bracelets. It's it's kind of a spacer thing, but I'm not sure what it's called. So I always think, in, Mustafa says, I have a car seat with the wooden beads. Yes, they're really popular. I buy them in garage sales and bazaars when they're broken. I was thinking something like this might work. It's actually a pin. And so it might work for this. Becca just got out of meeting. Hey, how are you? Becca, we're playing around with ideas for puppet earrings. So this is what I've got now is I don't have one of these spacer things, but I was thinking, what if I tried to make one with this piece? So I, this is, you know, you guys are on the ground floor. I don't know if this is going to work, but I thought I would try it. It's a, is it a flat pin, this piece here? It's possible. I'm not sure. Like I'd have to Google it to see, but but it's some kind of spacer thing. So we're going to see. But for this, I thought maybe I'll just try to like break it off because I don't want to ruin my cutters. So what if I just kind of bend it back and forth? I might have to get my cutters, but I thought if I could just, yeah, if I bend it back and forth, then I'm not going to ruin my cutters. Uh, Laura, I'll have to watch later. I have the dentist appointment. Okay, good luck at the dentist. So there we go. And then this side too. I think if we just, I mean... I wouldn't normally want to ruin these pins, but because I don't have any of those spacer beads, I would just go with that. So, and then you can always get a file or, you know, your cutters just to round off the ends a little bit. I don't have a file handy, so I would just like kind of round off the ends a little bit and I would file it so it wouldn't be so sharp. So I don't know if this is gonna work, but I was thinking that might be interesting 
just for like a little spacer thing. And then we, if we were going to do the puppet like this, I have a couple of ways that I can do this, but I thought I'd try it. There's this way. And then I'm going to show you the other, the other base piece that we can use as well which is I'll just make one now they're like the skeletons so I'm gonna get one of these and hey Kathy you're you're here awesome we're working on some ideas for little puppet earrings and so I'm just gonna make the base pieces now just to compare them to see how they work this is actually a really practical piece to know how to make to dangle things and I you'll see for example I have it not on this one. Oh no, I don't have it on that one, but I have something. I thought I had done it on that one, but I didn't do it quite on that, like that on that one. But I actually have a whole bunch of them that I made at one point. I'm not sure I, what would I put it, but I had a whole bag of them that I made for, because I used to do them for dangling earrings. And in fact, one of the earrings in the 10 day wire earring making challenge, I think had that type of design, but it was a try, you know, in the earring challenge, it was like this. It was a triangle, and there were those three loops on the bottom. So that's what we did in the earring challenge. So then you could dangle beads like that, right? So there we go. And so now what I'm going to do is make the base for the puppet, and hopefully, hopefully it's going to work. So we're just going to bring this around. And then next week I'm going to do more of the string art things uh, because remember last week we did the... We did the heart with the, uh, it was more like a stitched card thing. And Wendy had a really good idea to wind the the wire a little bit differently. And I really like the way, Wendy, that yours looked much better than mine. And so I'm going to experiment more. I realize when you do the string art, there's a way to do it. You actually have to, you actually have to, like, say we have the heart, right? So what I did... What I did was I just went like opposite sides and it didn't end up working out. But so Wendy, I think what you did with yours, which is what worked better, is you just go from one, not straight opposite, but you do kind of more like this type of thing. I think that's was more what you did. And then what happens when you do that is you get a nicer, you see how you get a nicer effect when you do it that way, because when I did it, it didn't work quite well. But see, when you go around the outside like that, like not going total opposite, but then you get a nice, I don't know how, like it's not perfect right now, but that idea. So then you get a nice kind of effect in the middle. So that was, that was the way to, that was the better way to do it. Had to twiddle at the top. So you had, yeah, I don't know. I'd have to do it like this. I just, my points aren't even at all in the right position but that we did it you did it that way which was much better because when I did it I ended up going like opposites right so what happens if you do it like opposite way you don't get any kind of nice pattern it ends up looking like a little knot in the middle so this is definitely the way to do it and not the way to do it so <laughs> that was great Wendy that you sent that I used the middle hole several times. Yeah, I think you can you can cheat a little bit. I don't even know if there's a proper way to do it. So here, like, so if we're going to do the puppet, the idea would be to have the three uh, loops, uh, space them out how you want. This is where I have to, I'm going to have to like troubleshoot because I don't know what distance these should be apart. So if we have them like the three loops and then I'm going to bend this to the back. Okay, and this is a really practical design. Just this piece is super practical to know how to do because you can use this with other types of designs. So we're going to bring this one up here. And then here, this, this one like this, I've been doing this design seriously for 30 years because what I, what I designed it originally for was I put a treble clef and then musical notes. And that was actually a pair of earrings. So... I, of course, I'm going to get off on a tangent and show you guys how to do that as well. But let me just uh, get the base done for now. And then maybe I'll do that quickly and then I'll do the puppet after. Yeah, the, the, the three glasses for three eyes. Weren't those fun, those eyeglasses? Tell me in the comments if you guys have made the glasses yet. I know some of you did. Neil, I know you posted one in the group um, today and I haven't had a chance to see it yet I just saw the notification pop up so I'll definitely go and check that out but the glasses were super fun 
and uh, maybe I'll pull them out to show people who haven't seen them yet. But this is the basic shape that we're going to use for our puppet. So let's start with that. So we have two like findings that we can use for the puppet. I'm just going to grab quickly the, um, the eyeglasses because they were super fun. So if you uh, didn't see yesterday's video, these are the eyeglasses. So these were really, 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 well, those are rings from another day, but these ones are really fun and maybe somehow we can incorporate them with our puppets too. So I've posted a picture in the Discord group. Okay, so I'll definitely check that one out after the live stream. So that's so much fun. Yeah, I've honestly, guys, I've been still a little bit burnt out from the bracelet challenge. So if I'm a little slow to respond to some of your comments, and some of your pictures, that's why. It just the, the bracelet challenge was super intense. And then I spent the weekend working on the prizes, which was really fun. So, so those are the glasses. Let's put them at the side in case we want to use them. Oh, and these were the funny ones that, um, uh, that a couple of people in the group had suggested putting beads. So those were kind of funny. I'm, I actually want to do something a little different with that. I actually want to make some smaller beads for those. But I thought those were super cute too. So here's here are these ones like this. So one idea would be to do, yeah, maybe rather than make it, I'll just show you like the musical note ones. So the one I did with, originally with the musical note was just like I dangle a treble clef and then a note, just a single note, I think it was, and then also the eighth note. So those were just really cute earrings just using that. So that's a really fun idea as well. Wow, it's so much easier to do with a pen rather than with the wire. It takes like two seconds. So now let's go ahead and try to do like a little puppet thing like that. So what I thought it would be really fun to do is try with chain. And I have a whole bunch of chain. Hey, Mia, how are you? Mia, we're just working on ideas for puppet earrings. And so that's what I have so far. And I want to try to find some chain that's going to work with that. So I have this stainless steel chain that might be good. It might be a little bit small. And I have some other chains here, but that one... I have to make sure I have some that are big enough. I have some gold ones which are nice too, but maybe I'll start with the silver and see how it goes. Here's some other chains. I have, I try to collect up these chains, you know, if I have broken necklaces or I get necklaces at a garage sale or something, they're just really useful for jewelry making. So I have a lot of random chain there. And then for this one, we want to do, there's a couple ideas. One is to use this bar, and then one is to use this with the dangling things. So I'm gonna start with the, the silver one here. And I'm working on doggy daycare pick. Oh, for Amber, oh, that's adorable. I can't wait to see it. I just love your, your mixed media pictures. They're so awesome, so much fun. So for this one, I think what I'll do first is just do the head and we'll hang the head down there. So what we need to do is find a bead and I could do the wooden bead with a little face. Um, I do have some, but I don't think I'm going to necessarily use them. This one's really cute. I think somebody drew that. I'm not really sure if somebody drew that or not, but that's gonna be too big. So I'm not gonna use that one. I'm just gonna use a regular bead, I think, and then I can always uh, do one after with a face on it. So maybe I'll just use like a little, just a little bead like that. I'm gonna to have to see what I have. I might have a wooden one in here that's smaller. Yeah, maybe I'll use a wooden one and I'll put a face on after. I can always do that. Remember I had the, um, Puppets, yeah, Amanda, hi, how are you? So this is just a wooden one that I could put a face on after. So maybe I'll just, for people that are hopping on uh, later, I'm gonna show you the prototype for this. This Well, these were the more elaborate puppet earrings that I made for my friends in California with their faces on them. So I'm trying to simplify the design to make actual like smaller, um, puppet earrings and almonds here how are you so so that's that so now the idea is how to attach it all right so if we put 
I'm gonna hang the head down first. So what I'll do is cut a piece and we're just gonna hang, and I'm gonna try to use chain with this as well instead of, because the original had tiger tail and it's a little bit too um, hard to work with because the tiger tail, you have to adjust the length perfectly with the crimps. And I don't know how many times I had to cut it back and start again. So, so, uh, Becca says this is so cute the puppets yeah the puppets are really fun and actually the lady had asked me if I sell them because I gave them to her as a gift and I said no I, I wouldn't sell those they're they're definitely one of a kind but I'm working on some designs that I could possibly put in my Etsy shop so this is just like a really basic prototype for for something like that and I might end up realizing that it's just too much work oh my goodness this one already has a face that's hilarious I didn't even realize this was from the Babushka doll uh, tutorial that I did, and she's already got a face. I had no idea. I just pulled her out of my box. So there we go. So that's easy. She's already got a face, and she is going to go here. So we're going to put her here, and then we want to hang it from here. But I'm just wondering, I think I'll just basically hang it from the top. I don't know if it has to hang down too much. It could hang down a little bit. So if I do want it to hang down a little bit, what I would do is just push this this way and love the face. Yeah, that one I had actually painted the face like large like this and then I shrunk it down. I scanned it and I shrunk it down. So that's uh, that was sort of the template for the babushka face but I'll just use it for the puppets. So now I wanted to hang it around, down a bit. So I just made that little extension bit a little bit longer. And Amber, three of the six cats went to the vet. Oh my goodness, you have had a busy day. Well, welcome. I hope you can have a couple of minutes to relax. And we are going to, I remember the Babushka dolls. Yeah, they were really fun. It was a fun design to work out. So now we're gonna go around here and if we twist it enough, it's going to hold this nicely in shape because we really want it to not flip around, right? We don't want the, the head to flip around. So put it in the position you want and then clip your wire when, you're, when it's in the position you want. Okay, and then we'll just give it a little cut. So there we have the face already. And we have it dangling down from the little piece. So there we've got that. So now what we want to do is the arms and the legs. So maybe what we could do for this is actually do like a couple of little shoulder loops too to hang the arms. So the arms stick out a little bit. So let's use the same concept as we did for the... Um, for the the base piece and we're going to make some little shoulder rounds i love this so much oh thank you so much i'm not going to write that much I only have a left hand oh no what's going on what's going on with your with your writing hand that's that's a real drag yeah when i know when i hurt my hand i was lucky it was on my left hand because at least i could still write so they, we're going to bring it here and we're going to do some little shoulders i don't want them too wide so we're just going to bring this one and then this one, see if we start forming the shoulder, other shoulder loop, that's not wide enough though. So we're going to make it a little bit wider. Okay, we'll make that a little bit wider. I have to figure out how wide it has to be. And so we're going to go like this. And then this one, we're going to bend it up because it'll have to attach to the, uh, the head. So we're going to bend that part up here. And then we want to complete our loop here and bring it across. So this is actually the same kind of concept that I use for the skeleton because I did a loop for each shoulder and then hung the beads down from each shoulder. So there we go. So we're going to take this and bring it across again psoriasis pain ouch yeah that's really that's really difficult i don't know what you do for that oh dang baby is waking up oh no catch the replay why everybody's got such busy lives it's uh it's pretty insane we're pretty quiet here actually not too bad no pets and uh, no young children so here we go so we're going to bring this one and then this piece i think i'm just going to bring down and bring it 
down this way and I'm going to keep this simple and I'll put some beads down there. So I won't attach it quite yet, but let me try to find some pretty beads to go in there. Uh, maybe like a little heart bead or something. I have these beads here, which are my favorite kind of mix of mir miracle beads and stuff. I do have a heart and I have some other beads too. So I'm going to just, I have to clear some space here. I'm going to bring that over. And what if we just put like a little heart? I don't know how well proportioned she's going to be. I'm going to just do what I can to have, uh, to use the beads that I have. I have to uh, go tuition tomorrow morning and evening. Hmm. Not quite sure what you mean by that. I keep losing track of what days you are, Mustafa, because you're um, ahead of us, right? So I think you're like late at night right now. I'm, the heart is not going to fit very well because it's going to get in the way of those um, shoulder beads. So if we just put like a like that, and maybe we can even put the heart underneath or something, or maybe I won't even use the heart. I'll see. It's not too bad. It's kind of cute. I think I'm going to try to keep this relatively simple. And so then to do the legs for this, we'll do it the same way where we're going to just bring this across. I think the heart's going to flip a bit, but we're I think we're just going to use, go with it for now. So if we're going to just bring this one across, in fact, maybe I should give it a little bit more space so we can wind the wire a bit. So we're going to bring that here. And then we're going to make this one here around and we're going to do another one to the other side so maybe bring this out a little bit here okay and then just bring this one around here and mm, how are we going to do this we just need two loops that's the basic thing so we're going to just do another one here i don't know if they're going to be far enough apart but this might look pretty goofy after it all, but it's just, I, I'm just for today working out the design concept. And then from there I could do some tweaking. So if we just have like two little loops for the legs and just bring that around and then I'm going to clip it here and then we'll just go from there and perfect. Wendy, why do you have to bath your cat? Oh my goodness. I remember bathing our cats when they had fleas. That was not fun. So here's, here's like sort of a body type thing. And then if you want to attach it to this one, the loop goes this way. So we're going to bring it this way. Okay. And rather than to have too much wire twisting around, I'm going to keep it very simple and just cut it to like half an inch. And we're going to bring it around back this way. So, uh, yeah, so as for the, um, what I was talking about, the Let's Get Live, uh, Let's Get Wired uh, live stream, I'm going to be doing that coming up soon in the next couple of weeks, and I'll definitely let you guys know when I'm going to be doing that. Hopefully, hopefully not this weekend, I don't think, because I'm not going to be around, but uh, maybe the following weekend or, or during the week. And let me know in the comments what's the best day to do the let's get um, wired live stream. Is it better on a Saturday or on a weekday or a Sunday? Saturday, Sunday or weekday? You guys can just let me know what's the best thing. Okay, so this is, yeah, see the neck looks really, really long for this. So maybe what I could do is actually make it a little bit smaller. See, this is where the troubleshooting happens because Sometimes it's going to look like a little bit off and maybe we shouldn't have even dangled the neck. That's what I'm wondering. Maybe it, maybe the neck could have, the head could have gone directly on that piece as well. But this is where you figure out what's going to work, what's not going to work. And um, it's true, the neck looks like it might be a little bit big, but I think we can figure it out. So we're just going to bring this down here. Okay, just bring that around. Perfect. So that's at least, you know, sort of the design concept so far where it's kind of attached like that. I'm kind of liking it. I think it will definitely need tweaking with uh, sort of proportions and stuff, but design wise, it's not too bad. So now I am going to see about this chain idea, if it's actually going to work. This is stainless steel chain that I bought for the name necklaces and I'm hoping it's going to be the right size. It might be a little bit small. 
so we're going to see if it's going to be the right size because I thought it would be really cute if you do the arms and legs and then you just kind of, I don't think I'm going to attach the legs to a chain, but the arms I could do. So let's do the legs. So we'll do the legs now. I'll just get some of the same wire and then we'll go from there. I'm going to get these tools out of the out of the view here and cut some wires for the legs. So what we could do for the legs, uh, you can use beads for the feet if you want. I'm gonna just form the feet like I did with the original puppets and then uh, bead the, uh, the legs. So we're gonna go from there. Okay, and we are going to cut this one in half and just pull this out like this. So yeah, so I'm glad you guys are chatting in the comments because that makes it easier for me just to work out the design and um, and focus on this. And you guys can chat about your cats. I think that's uh, that's awesome. You guys all have something in common. It's Linda says it's Saturday. Oh, Saturday's best. Every I think most people say Saturdays. Eh, uh, weekend days are better. Perfect. That's good to know because. Um, yeah, I want as many people to be able to to watch it as possible. So that would be great. So now let's just, I'm just going to look at my original picture of the puppet so I can see what I did with the feet. Yeah, so what I did with the feet was I just formed them out of wire. So that was pretty cute. So I think I'll do the same thing. And we'll just make sure these are long enough. And then I'll just form some little feet. So if you do them both at once, then they're gonna be a little more symmetrical. Now they might be way too big for, for this size puppet, but we're gonna just go with that and see. So we're gonna go there and then up here. So there's the feet. And then what you can do is just kind of twist it around here. So there's one and then the other foot yeah, it's the opposite direction. Perfect. So we're going to bring that around. Perfect. So there are the little, the little feet. And we're going to put some beads on it. So let me see what I have for beads. I have different kinds of beads. I have like long ones and short ones. I thought it might be cool to, to combine some of like the longer ones. So let me see if I have any that are actually going to fit on the wire though. That's what I'm not 100% sure about if that, what, see, oh, it does fit. Okay, so let's see if we have any that are like the right size. Trouble with these is I have a whole mix of different colors and that. So I'm going to have to see if I have any that actually are going to match because I have a lot of green ones. I don't know if I have any red ones. That's the trouble, you know, I have all these random beads and I'm not sure if I have any good colors. So that's red, okay. And then I have a bunch of green ones as well. And let's see, I have, these are the bugle beads and they're they're really fun, nice beads, you know, they're really, they're really great for projects like this. Uh, the blue is nice too. So let's see if they're actually going to fit on there. And, uh, that would be really great. I'm going to try the blue ones. So if we do like a blue one, I think it's going to fit. Yeah, that fits all right. And then I thought it'd be nice to have like a little kind of knobbly knee in the middle. I think I'm just going to do a bunch of random colors. I'm going to see how it goes. And like I said, this is like a really, if you wanted to joint the knees, you could, you could definitely like do two separate wires and stuff. That would not be a problem. But I think for now, I'm just going to figure out like, if I did something like that, she's got skinny legs, but that's okay. We can just play around with that. And then we're going to put this one on here if it's going to fit. No, that one's not going to fit. So what else have we got? Let me just see with some other beads to see if it's going to be better. Because I have these, I have like other kind of shiny beads as well. It might look better because these look kind of skinny. I'm not 100% convinced about those. So I'll just see what other beads I have. And then we can go from there because I have like this type of bead as well, some faceted beads. This is the part that can take forever because, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about those either. And I also have these seed beads so we can go from there. 
Uh, she is like me skinny. Yeah, like me too. Definitely extremely skinny. So um, let me see what I can do here. I'll do, I'll do the legs differently, both legs a little bit differently, and then you guys can let me know what you like. So I'm going to just do sort of, I actually, I like the way they looked on the original, which was just um, using uh, these seed beads. I think it's going to be better. You know, sometimes you have an idea to do something and then it just doesn't quite work like you wanted it to. So these might be better just to do. I just don't want them to be too long either. So let's just put that. And I'm just going to see, just for example, this might be too knobbly as a knee, a big, a big knee. See, there's so many decisions you have to do when you're designing things. It's just, uh, it's really difficult sometimes to make those decisions. I'm going to try like this and see how it goes. And this one... Haven't tried this. Okay. Oh, it's still talking about cats. <laughs> That's so funny. You got you guys are really into cats. I should I should do some more cat things out of wire too. So this one's already better than this one. This one I don't like at all. So I'm gonna just remove that and just go with the seed beads. I think it's gonna be better. So we're gonna put some more seed beads and let's do another red one. And then the amber one. I put together a little bag of mixed seed beads that are all sort of similar-ish colors. And uh, yeah, I like the way they look. But the one thing I wanna check is what looks better. Uh, where did I put my miracle beads? I'm just gonna grab my miracle beads because those are my favorite. You guys know I love miracle beads. I have a whole like tray that's mix of cat's eyes and miracle beads so I have it's hard to tell because they're all in baggies and you know separated and stuff but I have a bunch of the miracle beads that I'm going to get some of those and let's see how it looks with a slightly larger because that one is a four millimeter but let's try it with the six and see what looks better so we'll do that one and that one and a red one and then an amber one. And then we'll see which one looks better because sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of variety. Okay, so this one's with the six millimeter and this one is with the with the four millimeter. I think I like the six just for the contrast. So I will take that one off and put the six millimeter one. I think I like the contrast on that. So that's a dream of mine to own that many beads. This is a small portion of the beads that I own, and I actually know own a very few compared to my friend Patricia. She has so many beads, it's insane. She she uses beads to make uh, sun catchers. She's actually a writer, but she makes little funky sun catchers and stuff as well when she sells at her books at craft shows. So now I'm gonna just like make the loop for the foot. So I'm gonna cut this to like half to three, three eighths to half an inch here. Okay, we're going to just clip that one off and then I'll get my round pliers, bring that. And I'm going to remove some of this stuff that's in the way too. It's just distracting. So we're going to bring this one back and then around and then we're going to attach it to that leg here. Uh, da -da -da -da. And close that one up. Okay, and then we need the other one. So I'm not even using jump rings. I'm just putting them directly on the base. So now we're gonna cut this one and that one here. Okay, so Vedahi, what if you put two long beads and a small bead in between for the knee? That's what I tried with the bugle beads, but if I had thicker beads that weren't the bugle beads, like these are way too skinny for a long bead. But if I had like longer, fuller beads, I think it would look really good too. I agree with you. I think that would look really good. But because I don't have any like handy, I'm just gonna go with the seed beads for today. And then uh, this, like I said, this is a super prototype. So I think it would be great to try something like that to put some longer beads so she's just really funky and bizarre so she's cute like that you could even bend the legs if you want 
And like I said, you can make the legs jointed if you want as well. I'm liking this. It's coming. It's coming. It's a, it's definitely a work in progress. So let's bring her around like that. So now we're going to do arms that work with the, uh, that work with the legs. And I think I am going to make the funky hands, even though they're going to be way too big. Um, I had a feeling I get all my bees from a local owned rock and mineral shops. Ah, that's a good idea. Yeah, especially for natural stone uh, beads. So here's the puppets again. So see for their hands, I made like fingers on them. And I know they're going to probably look disproportioned, but I just like the way they look. I think they're super cute. So let's try that. So we'll get the wire again. So we're going to just get this. And I'll cut a couple of pieces so they don't have to be too, too long. And But I'm not sure I'm going to make five fingers. I think for the samples I made four, but I'm wondering if I should even do just three fingers to make it more um, uh, stylized. Um, Mustafa says, my legs are pointing in the wrong direction. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Mustafa, are you making one at the same time? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, there's so much possibilities for this. It's definitely a really open-ended design. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and do the hands. So we're going to go ahead and take this one and bend this out. And like I did the feet, it's good to make two at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and then bend this one down. And we can adjust them after to tighten up the design a bit. Yeah, these are going to be probably way too big, these hands, but that's okay. We're just going to play around with it. So we're going to go like that. We can even, rather than form the fingers, just sort of make like a, we could just make like a regular, might be a bit better, right? Because it's so small. We could just make like a, a little hand like that. That might be better. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Rather than do the fingers, I think I'm just going to make it more like, like a mitten almost type of thing. So we're going to just go like that and see how that looks like that and i don't know now it looks like a claw so let's go back to square one and try the hand and then if it doesn't work we'll just we'll just do something else with it maybe even just make a circle which is often what i do when i'm doing hands is just to make a circle so we're going to bring this one down here line those up a little bit and if these end up being too big, I'll just do the do a little circle. Or you could even do a bead. Something else I've done is like just a hand, uh, like a heart bead, which maybe I'll end up doing. So, because I think these are going to be, these are going to be like too big. But we'll try it. Let's just try it and see. And then we'll make a decision after about what we want to do. So this is would be just with the four fingers. So then you could take them apart and just kind of get your flat pliers and bring them in a little bit. So we're just tighten them up. Okay, we'll just tighten them all up in there. Bring us in, bring that in, and bring that in a bit. And then we can just like pull it right in to tighten it up as much as we can. I mean, it doesn't really look much like a hand. But it does a bit, it definitely looks more like a hand than the one that looked like a claw. So this is this definitely better than the previous one. And this one too, I think I'm gonna have to, I had tightened it up, but I think I wanna loosen it up a little bit now. So we're just gonna go there and there, and then just bring this one around, okay? And clip it. So there we have like a little, a cute little hand. And it's kinda cute, it's not too bad. I think I'm going to go with that. I think it's going to work better than if I did a heartbeat. So it should be not too bad. So let me just make this this one a little rounder because I think I have to put a jump ring in there. And then now we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to pull it in a little bit. So this one I'm going to keep a little bit round. I'm going to pull these fingers in a little bit to tighten them up because the end of the my round pliers, you know, isn't, I mean, it's pretty small, but it's not small enough, like, for what I want to do here. So that's okay. We're just going to pull them in, tighten them up, and it should be fine. So we're just going to keep, like, pushing them in a little bit. And then 
they're nice and tight and a bit smaller. So now this one kind of looks like some weird fan thing, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. We're going to make this uh, thumb a little bigger in case we have to put a jump ring in there. Bring that in and just twist it around. So then we have our arms. Clip that and yep, so one the hand the thumbs can go up. So there's that would be like the little arms and then now we can put some um, beads on there. Now I'm thinking I should have put some hair on her because some I could add wire hair and I've also used embroidery floss for hair before too, which is really cute as well. So I think just to keep it consistent, I'll just do the same type of beading as I did in the legs and then we'll go from there. So we've got um, the hematite one, we'll do a red one. These are the seed beads and now a amber one and let's just see how long they have to be so maybe in this case because I don't want it to be too big like the one I did for the knee maybe now I could add like the four millimeter bead and then we can add the hematite and red I'm just trying to go for the smaller size beads that I have of these designs and then the arm won't be as long as the leg because otherwise see so already the arm is a little shorter which is great and so now I'm going to attach it so you could attach it with a jump ring but I'm going to try to attach it directly with the um, with the wire otherwise it's going to end up being too big so we're going to just clip that here and we're going to bring this one back and around and we're going to attach that one to this side of the puppet. And I'm not going to make a pair of earrings, obviously, today. This would take forever. But this is the prototype. And then from here, you could try all different things. So here's, here's her arm. She's kind of funky. Is she upside down? Let me just see. No, I think she's good. Yep. Yeah, so there's the arm. And, of course, it's going to go all over the map right now. But hopefully she'll come together when we put on the chain. So now we're going to put the beads. I'll use the smaller ones. So we have hematite, we have red, and just looking for the smaller size ones, amber, and da, 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 da. we have a I'm getting mixed up about whether you guys are talking about the beads or whether you're talking about the cats. I'm catching like little glimpses of conversation and sometimes you can like interpret it in your own way, but I think you're still talking about cats. So, <laughs> so there we go. So we're going to go around here and now I need a smaller amber and we're good. So now we're going to Mm, yeah, that's the right way. So now we're going to clip it to 3 eighths to half an inch here. And we're just going to wind that around. Oh, now you're on to wire. <laughs> You'll have to, I wish we had audio. And then I could actually hear what you guys are saying because it's very hard to read comments and uh, make wire at the same time. So uh, if we had some kind of audio system, and, and you know, that we did one time before on a Zoom call, but I found the Zoom call wasn't very effective. It just was very hard to actually show my hands. So I kind of scrapped that Zoom idea uh, from the beginning. We did it once and it was fun, but it didn't, you know, it was hard to see like what we were working on and stuff. So let me know, let me know what your, twist the cat's, legs okay but this is we're talking about you making cats out of wires see that's the part that i missed yeah the hands are cute eh? even though they don't have five fingers they're stylized and i think it looks really cute so now what i want to do is try to attach the chain because originally i had put uh, the tiger tail but i found it was very um how do i say it was very uh, stiff and hard to measure like the right size but what I'm going to need for that also is some jump rings so let me try to find some jump rings or I'll just make them myself 
because I don't know if I have any jump rings that are that small. So what I'm going to do is take some wire. Probably the best would be 20, uh, 2 gauge wire because 20 is going to be too big. So now I'm going to just take the 24 gauge wire because it's for sure it's going to fit in the chain. And I'll just make a few rings and we'll just use this as a temporary measure for jump rings because I just want to make sure I have something that's actually going to fit in that chain. So we could do like around like this. The other thing is like if you want a really small jump rings, you can cut a piece of thicker wire like this. I have a wire here that's more like a 16 gauge wire. So we could try that too and see, well, see if it's going to be too big or too small because you really want pretty small jump rings to fit into that chain. So here, I'm gonna remove some of this stuff again because it's a bit of a mess. And so now what we're going to do is take the 24 gauge wire and wind it around this 16 gauge wire. So let's just try that. They might be too small now, so we're gonna go around. You could also wrap it around a toothpick, a bamboo skewer, a crochet hook, uh, there's all kinds of things you can do. So this, this is too small, I think. So let me see what else I have that's a little bit bigger. I think I have, yeah, I do. Let's try this. I have a crochet hook that I think is going to be better. So we'll try it around there, cause that one is, yeah, that one's too small for jump rings. So let's try. I don't mind doing them with the pliers, but the trouble with the pliers is they're a little uneven. So let's try to get this. Okay. Let's put this and let's bring it around. Okay. One, two, three. We'll need at least four. I think we'll need four all together. Okay. So that seems to be a slightly better size. So let's just go with that and Cool, so we're gonna bring this, put that, zoom bombers. Oh my goodness, oh zoom, okay, this is, you're talking about zoom meetings. Yeah, no, because I had done some at first and um, they're okay for talking, but for demonstrating things, they're really not that useful because um, I just found it was really hard to get a like a camera angle that would work. So let's just go ahead and cut some of these jump rings. And like I said, I think I'm gonna have to remake or refine some jump rings, but this is just gonna be temporary just so we can see if it's gonna work with the chain. So we're just gonna do that, cut those apart. Normally when I make jump rings, I would actually use a jeweler's, jeweler's saw to saw them apart, but that should be okay. So we have our teeny tiny jump rings. Okay, I'm just gonna grab a sip of water. Sorry you missed the chat, you were busy making. Yeah, ditto Mustafa, I'm missing half the chat. And I'm really get, glad that you guys are keeping the conversation going because it's really hard for me to, um, to multitask. So there we go. So we're gonna bring this here and we're going to, it's easier on the premiere because the premiere of the video is already filmed and all I have to do is like focus on the chat. So, but with the live streams for sure, it's much different. So now if I'm going to attach the chain and then I'm going to stick this in this um, loop here. So we're going to stick that here. Okay. And then close it up. So that would be one side. And then you're going to attach it somewhere in there, but just as a temporary measure, I'm just gonna clip it longer than I need. Okay, I don't mind to clip it like a little longer than I know I'm gonna need. And then I'll attach the other side. I think it's gonna be cute. And I don't think it's necessary to put four strands because you could put them also on the feet, but it ends up being a little bit distracting. You know, the idea for an earring is you want it to be as simplified as possible and that's you know that's always the design challenge is to create something that looks authentic but is not doesn't have too much detail because the minute you put too much detail it distracts and um, 
it doesn't, you know, it doesn't help the design. You need, it's like impressionism, you know, things are done with fewer, fewer lines or very quickly and they give you the impression of something. So it's the same with this type of design for jewelry. You want it, you, simpler is sometimes better. So we're going to just do that. And so now we have our chains. And yeah, she definitely needs work this design, but I think the basic concept is pretty good. So now we're going to cut the chain. We'll cut it a little bit longer. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll hold it up to see like how long it, it has to be because this adjusting part is going to be really, really hard. So let me just hold it up so I can kind of see what I'm going to have to do. Okay, so this one, it's hard for you guys to see what I'm doing here because I'm holding it vertically. But what I want to do is just clip it where I think it's going to be best. And then we're going to clip this side too about where I think it needs to be. And if it's not perfect, it's fine. I'm just like, I'm just holding it vertically so I can have a somewhat idea of how it should be. And then what I can do is lay it down again and then put in the last jump ring. So we'll take this jump ring and stick it in the end of the chain. Actually, we'll just stick it. This is really tricky. We'll stick it in the thumb here. I'm going to have to pick it up. Uh, get in there. Boop. Yeah, it's wiggling around. So we're going to take that in there. Uh, see, when this happens, when I'm filming a video, I just cut it out. <laughs> but because this is live, every little thing that I do is included in the video. So this is live. So now we're going to close up the that one yeah sometimes you might notice in my videos like there's jump cuts and basically that's because i have problems like this and then i just cut them out of the video so now we're going to do the other side okay and now we're going to hold that again and pull that through there uh yep Perfect. It's very fine chain. I don't think a 20 gauge wire would have worked for the jump rings because the chain is very fine. So now we're going to close it up. And I think it's going to be easier for you to see when I hold it, hold it up to the screen. So maybe, yeah, so that's pretty, that's actually really good. So let me flip the screen so you guys can see. There we go. Whoop, perfect. So we'll flip the screen around and perfect. It's going to be easier for you to see that way. So there, there it is. So it's dangling and then the arms are attached with chains and then it's a little bit long for the earring, but it's the concept, right? So that's, that's one concept of the design. And then what I'm going to do is I'll keep, he's cute. I kind of like him. So he's, he's very, or she, she needs hair so I could add some hair to it. And then I could put it on an earring, uh, a little earring hook. And then another time I'll try one with this type of bar thing, but uh, I don't think I'll do that today. I'll do that another day. And then we'll also figure out when we can do a let's get wired uh, session. And you guys can, you know, keep making suggestions in the Discord group about uh, what we could do for just uh, uh, Let's Get Wired. And look out for the 10-day wire gift-making challenge in November because we're going to be doing uh, that and I have some cool ideas for that as well. Hopefully get that organized ahead of time. There's our little guy. And um, yep, yeah, so we'll see you on Discord. We'll see you in the Facebook group. And I wish everybody a great rest of the week. Thanks for hanging out. That was really super fun. And we'll see you the next time. Bye.